Hello and welcome to this video for ElectroPages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here in Nuremberg for Embedded World 2025 and I'm joined by a very good friend, Laurent from ESOL. Thank you ever nice so much you. for being here today. Thank you for your time. Fantastic. Yeah. So just before we dive into what's going on here at this booth today, just tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Oh, that's an interesting question. Let's start by the beginning. So, my name is Laurent Emmerich. I'm a VP Customer Solution and Engineering for ESOL Europe. ESOL is a Japanese company, 50 years old today, or this year, sorry. Um, we are expanding in Europe, and this is what I've been hired for. So, um, what am I doing? I'm supposed to support our customer with our products and our solutions. Mm. Because what we're trying to do differently with ESOL is not to be just selling products. Yep. Our motto this year is full stack engineering. And the idea is to say, okay, the products are getting overly complex. It's not easy for anyone to no. buy a product off the shelf and use it. So this is where our company is acting slightly differently. We have half of the company working on products, half of the company working on services around our product, but not limited to our products. We can expand to other <coughs> products too. Um, among the products, mostly operating systems, middleware, stocks, but not limited to that. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea, in Japan, we have nearly 80 people working on ROS, ROS, the robot operating system, which is a framework dedicated to robotic and mobility. This is a demo we're showing there. Do you want yeah. to see it? Yeah, so sure, here, for instance, this is really a good example. We could simply sell an operating system. Yeah. We could tell to our customer, do whatever you want. Yeah. But we want to be proactive. So we took the latest version of ROS, we ported that to our operating system, mm. and we ported that to the extent that we cherry-picked the components. Yeah. We didn't go mainstream, downloading everything on the internet and putting that at work. We're trying to be conscious about the footprint, the performance, in order to offer the optimized integrated solution to our customers. We've implemented ROS to Jazzy, which is the latest version, but by doing so, we try to be slightly more creative. So nowadays, there are new protocols. We do support DDS as a communication protocol, but we decided to opt for Xeno. Xeno is the new protocol, very trendy. The ROS community has adopted Xeno for the next generation of ROS implementation, and we decided to be proactive. Now you would say, Laurent, this is another stuff. You download it on the internet, fairly easy. Not at all, because we've implemented our own middleware implementation using the Xeno protocol to demonstrate our skills in engineering and also by contributing to the community. Mm. Everything is open source. Everything is available and demonstrate our skills in engineering around technology as complex as ours. So as I said, operating system is our core business, but the services, the extension, the middleware, and the component on top of that are really important. Mm. Every time I'm talking about that to our customer, they say, wow, you mean we don't have to do it? No, you mm. don't. This is our business. Use the resources for your product. Mm. Pay us to do the work. We prepare everything for you. This is full stack engineering. This is really what we do. We have some architects that are also consulting on functional safety, on security. This is the value we bring because we know all the ingredients. We know all the components. Who can better than us integrate, check, and prepare everything for the customers? And, and so just to be clear, are customers coming to you saying they need a robotic arm or are they giving you the robotic arm design and saying, can you now make the controller and the software around that? We, we, we could do that. Hmm. We, we have no limitation to what we want to do. Now, we are fairly pragmatic. I'm not going to sell resources just for the sake of selling resources. It needs to be a win-win situation. Yeah. I don't want to waste my resource just to make money. Mm. I want to provide value to the customer. Yeah. So if they're asking me something that I know I won't be able to do, I will be fairly honest. Not this time, we'll see you next time with the next design. And this is the value, the trust that we're trying to build with our customers and partners. Very unique. I mean, uh, I've been in this industry for 25 years now. I think the credibility is very important. And I think this is what we're building it upon. Well, that's, is like, well, that's, we, that's very interesting you say that because, and I actually had this conversation with my colleague uh, earlier on today, which is that I would rather a company be honest about their capabilities or what they can or can't do, because then not only would I feel like I can trust them more, but then I would actually want to do more business with them because I know I can trust them. Yeah. And if they say they can do something, they can definitely do it. Because if they can't, they will tell you. And, and Absolutely. how many times I've, say, I've said honestly to customers, mm. I'll pass on that RFQ, I'll pass on that RFI, but if you still need me to consult on your design, mm. more than happy to do so. Mm. Because I'll demonstrate my skill, I'll demonstrate the skills of my company, my team. And then people remember that. Next time, they'll pick the phone and the first company they'll call is you. 
So it, it, it's, it's really, I mean, I, I've been building more product than I've sold. Mm. And I know what it is to be on the Friday, stuck, having a demo on the Monday. You need a strong partner. You need a company you can call that will decide to live on pizza, to survive on pizza over the weekend, to make sure you deliver on the Monday. Fantastic. This is what this all is all about. Now, of course, what kind of pizza are we talking about? Uh, I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a prosciutto. Uh, perfect, yeah. perfect. But uh, it, it's, it's really, really important. I think that uh, you, you, the, the, the relationship is more yeah. important than the product. And it's so important that you've got someone who, who's, it's, it's, no, it's more than you just providing a service. You take an active interest in your customer's problem. You I mean, want to make sure that they're getting exactly what they need. And, and, and it's almost like you're taking it on as if it was your own product, it's your own baby. This is my product. This exactly. is our relationship. We're building that together. And you take a sense and, of pride in that as and well. And on the first call, I always say, virtually, I'm joining your team if we're doing this. Yeah. This is what it all does. I mean, selling product is easy. Building relationship, building solution, going to production is a difficult part. And, and I think this is what we're doing. And, and that's what I, and I kind of see is you don't work for your customers. You work with your customers. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I usually don't even call them customers. We're partners. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's like you want to you want to make sure that you're involved and, and you've got a vested interest in what they're doing. And you Their success see... is my success. Exactly. It's the feeling. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned a bit about open source here, and I'm kind of wondering, how much of an impact has open source hardware and software had on your ability to deliver customer solutions? I, th I think open source, um, uh, I mean, for, for the story, I introduced Linux when I was back in the days at BMW. Mm. It was a bit of a game changer because mm. Linux is used in the cars nowadays everywhere. Mm. And I think that I've always been a big fan of open source because sharing some of the code, sharing some of the responsibility on the part that is not really differentiating mm. is smart. Now we do business, we need to pay the bills at the end of the month. Mm. So this is the good mix and the good balance between open source, but also building business. Because, because, uh, and, I, and I completely agree with that because I mean, as, as you know, open source allows you to innovate faster, allows you yeah. to, to, to build up things quickly, but at the same time, if nobody can, can profit from their designs, they can't then continue to innovate. No, no. And, and so you need to make sure you get that balance right. And open source is not free. I mean, uh, let's be clear on that. This is just a shift of paradigm on the cost structure. Mm. And again, this is where I rather people, uh, have people use open source component mm. and us being paid to provide consultancy, mm. integration, work, and so on. This is a good combo. Mm. Now we have our proprietary solution, the combination of proprietary mm. solution, open source ecosystem, integration work, consulting, and so on, is the magic solution. It's successful story. And, and making things like your, your uh, uh, RTOS open source, that allows customers to also continue working on that even after they've then concluded their business with you. What, what, what do you mean, sorry? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, is the RTOS that you're running here open source that you've developed? No, that, that, that won't be. That's, that's the part. So the, 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 oh, the, the real-time operating system is proprietary. So right, right. that part is IP. But the ecosystem we build on top is made of many open source components. Right, I'm with you. Because yeah. it makes no sense to reinvent the wheel for something that is highly exactly. complex. Yeah. Now, the difference with our integration is that we do some further integration. We optimize those open source component to our operating system to make sure that they provide the best in-class performance. Now, when it comes to the customers that you've had, partners, not customers, Indeed. What would you say is the biggest challenge that they tend to find? The, 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 the biggest hurdle when it comes to getting a complete solution? Uh, a lot of newcomers, lack of experience. Mm. Uh, I mean, I think that if I were to list the number of issues I put in vehicles over my career, mm. that's, that's, that's money, that's knowledge. Mm. And this is what we bring. We have many senior people and that can educate. And every single time you have a new partner and then, and then someone else comes along, they're going to benefit from all of the past yeah. experience that you guys are building. I mean, this is knowledge for free. I mean, mm. literally, because yeah, <laughs> we were talking about partner, but there's still a bit of a business around that. But uh, still, I think this is this is having access to uh, seasoned engineer, knowledgeable people, and experience. Mm. So this is Fantastic. this is what we offer. And again, full stack engineering. This 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 full stack engineering is really our motto: mm. the product, the knowledge, put together with a full integration, and anything the customer or the partners will need. This is something we can offer. Fantastic. Now, I understand that some of your partners might want to be a bit more discreet when it comes to their designs and IP. So, of all the projects that you've worked on, what's the one that you found the most interesting? I, I will probably give you a kind of a very high open, level. Oh, no, yeah. open answer is oh, okay. every single project is interesting to me. They're all go. different. Hmm. Every project brings something. And, and we all at the company very eager to learn 
to increase our knowledge. So anything, I mean, there, there is no easy project. Every project is challenging in some way. Mm. And uh, so I can't tell you that any project was better than another. They mm. all were very that, interesting. That, good answer. Yeah. So, so again, every single project brings its own thing to the table, yeah. gives you your own unique knowledge, own unique experiences, and then you can bring those experiences to the next yeah. partner, not customer, partner. Indeed. <laughs> so you've got another example here, and yeah. it looks very, very interesting. Explain what's going on. So here I've, I've shown you a POSIX operating stem, rich ecosystem, but as I told you, we, we're not just addressing the big SSCs, big cores and so on. We're working on very tiny microcontrollers too. So here what we're trying to demonstrate is our ability to develop hypervisor uh, implementation. And here this is our hypervisor for microcontroller running on a tiny microcontroller and showing how we can do the, you know, the classical bits, Autosar classic, everything that is seen in the automotive. But here we have the ability to isolate some other partitions and sandbox some application. So let's take a very simple example. You are a car manufacturer. You want your system to be very safe. The CAN bus needs to be there all the time. I mean, this is not something you can afford losing the yeah. CAN communication. Now, you have your partner at the tier one that is doing the integration. They want to bring the software. Mm. And there is always a challenge at some point in time, finger pointing. Yeah, your fault, your fault. Best ID, isolate everyone in their partition. Mm. If this is their problem, we'll notice very quickly. It's all in our hypervisor, everything is isolated. That's safe, that's also safe. Mm. But then suddenly you have the third party company. You have identified the nugget, the IP you want to bring in your system. Those guys have no idea about automotive or safety. Are you going to bring that IP that is very sexy into your application without having to teach them everything? Mm. You put them in another partition, they live in their world, they do their stuff, and if they crash, everything is safe, you just restart them. Mm. So that ability on tiny microcontrollers is also something we offer. So think about tiny microcontrollers, very small footprint, optimized, whatever, up to the, I mean, we, we had projects on SOCs that were running with 100 cores. Yeah, literally. 100 cores? Yeah, I mean, multi heterogeneous architecture is what our operating system has been designed for. Right. And we have that ability. So we, we've been there for a while. Now with a dual core, quad core, it was not really apparent what was the benefit. Nowadays, 25, 40 cores is common. And, and uh, we're and, going to see... And so it's this increase in core count that's making hypervisors important. Uh, not only hypervisor, but the, the, the core architecture of our operating system, mm. MCOS, is going to really show the difference because literally our multi-kernel architecture is designed in a way that whenever application needs to go down to the kernel mm. and concurrently access some resources that are managed by the kernel, on a traditional architecture, you will have a performance hit. Mm. We don't have that. We have a multi-kernel. Every core has its own kernel and a very efficient communication between the kernels. And it, it looks like when you've got these different cores here, I'm guessing that the, uh, the the power for each core is also controllable by the hypervisor as well. No, the hypervisor is pinned on one core, yep. and, and the communication is maintained between the sandbox through the hypervisor, but ultimately the, the core zero here is the master. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. They yep. can communicate through the hypervisor, they can communicate between the sandbox, but that one will be our master. I mean, this is the configuration we decided and that, to And that's also giving you the security as well, so non-trusted apps can't interfere with the rest exactly. of the Exactly, I mean, this is the idea. Yes. This is a safe world. I mean, never die, always there. Hmm. The rest can be rubbish. You can deal with a partner, but there is no more finger pointing, oh, this is your problem, hmm. and working over the weekend trying to debug who was fault. I'm also guessing as well that if you, if you have this kind of isolated setup and one system does fail, I'm guessing it's easier to detect that failure uh, and pinpoint where the issue is, because if, if, if the whole system failed, it's kind of hard to figure out who's the cause of the problem. I, I mean, uh, we could actually do the demo, I'm not the expert, but actually <laughs> we, we can push some button, kill some VM, we'll see the LED that stop working. So we can literally, who was the problem, which application was the problem, we can restart that application, we can definitely kill that application, say, yeah, you need to go to the dealer, we need to check that. Mm. So literally we have full control. And, and that's not an application we created like, because we wanted to be fancy. This is based on customer request. And today we've put that demo here on NBD World to demonstrate our capability to address one question they asked us a few months ago. Yeah. So in a few months, we put that demo together. In two months, we ported the latest version of ROS on our operating system. Again, full stack engineering. We know our OS, 
we can integrate anything on our operating systems because we have the knowledge and the capability to do so. And so would it be fair to say that your rapid development is as a direct result of being able to get pizza? I think this <laughs> is it, yeah. Fantastic. So just before we wrap this video up, I've got one more question for you. Yeah. For the people watching this video, if they want to get involved with ESOL Solutions and using your full stack uh, engineering solution, what would you recommend that they do? Oh, they go on our website, they can contact us there. And uh, I'm, I'm really curious typically, so very quickly, I will contact them personally and we'll explore potential partnership around our solution products. And as I said, Fantastic. if this is not a win, we'll talk later. I can still help them with a design. And uh, yeah, we can look for a successful partnership. Brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time. To Thank you, Robin. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Really appreciate it.